Hey guys, Richard at Reefs.com, and this is another episode of Reefs at ACI Aquaculture. <laughs> so, let's move from this side section. Yes. I know you've been farming a lot. I mean, like, yeah. like I said, last time I was here, this wasn't completely done. You were setting the tank back there, and it was just getting filled, and you were just starting to cycle some of the Marco rock that was there. You were here with Tulio. Yes, I was. And we were talking about lighting. Absolutely and we were right. talking about my dilemma with my torch corals that we grew in the back for, since 2018 when the yeah. Indonesian coral, coral band hit. I only have two of those torches left. Well, it's probably now 10, but we lost almost all 72 polyps. No. And oh we put the halides up, all my problems went away. Now, why do you think that? And yes. Okay, I my, theories, <laughs> my theories on lighting are again, just theories, folks but it makes sense. I think about everything I do when it comes to my reef system in a logical way. Um, I'm no scientist, but I think about things and if they make sense, prove me wrong. If I'm wrong, I will accept the fact that I'm wrong. I'm a big boy, but I haven't been proven wrong with any of the theories and everything that I've done with everything I thought about and why I went back to using metal halides and T5s was because I think we're missing something when we don't have full spectrum lighting hitting our aquarium. Mm -hmm. We're farming corals. I don't think it's a problem using LEDs for hobbyists. Yeah. I really don't. But when it comes to farming corals, do I want my corals dying? No, I'm farming not. them, right. farming them. That means this, I need to keep them long term. Right, and this is your livelihood. If I am <laughs> having problems with an all LED lit system, yeah. and I fix it by putting metal halides back, yeah. Sorry. something tells me does not have to do directly with corals. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the ecosystem. Okay. Okay, we all know what source of all energy on this planet is. Mm -hmm. And for anybody to say that we don't need a full spectrum lighting hitting our water column is naive to me. Because that would mean we could put a big, we don't need the sun to survive. And that's just ludicrous. So my theory is that the full spectrum lighting from a metal halide, mm -hmm. and again, it's not the sun, yeah. but it's a more broad spectrum than what any LED can produce. Yeah. And I never had problems farming corals without, with metal halides and T5s. Mm -hmm. I experienced the problems only with straight LED system. So when we went back, the problems went away. We also put a UV sterilizer on our system. Am I running too much water through the UV sterilizer? No, so we do get killed from that. My, I, I have a theory also, not just with people with LED lit tanks only, if you don't want to put the metal halides up over your tank because mm -hmm. you're afraid your electric bill is going to go up, which is ludicrous as well because a watt's a watt. Mm -hmm. And LEDs when they first came out were a lot less wattage, but when they realized that those lower watt LED systems couldn't grow acros, they went with the 300 watts. Well, what's the difference between a 300 watt LED and a 250 watt metal halide? 50 more watts on your LED, using more electricity. But there's no heat because there's no full spectrum. You're not getting infrared. So you can argue with me all day long, and I'll combat it, and I'll win it. <laughs> because, you know, it, it, it's logic. It's all logic. And bottom line, if you have an LED lit system, I have, my theory has been broadened with a guy that had an, LED, had an LED lit system, never had any problems, had a UV sterilizer on his tank, and all of a sudden, he had dinos pop up. The UV sterilizer, he backed the flow down with his Abyss pump mm -hmm. to 200 gallons an hour, which was recommended to go through that for a kill. Right. But he was running 2,000 gallons an hour through oh it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it wasn't doing anything to kill. Right. But guess what? It was exposing the water column to ultraviolet light. Mm -hmm. He never had any problems growing any corals. All of a sudden, about a month into it, he forgot the problem mm -hmm. was solved and he never turned back up his Abyss. All of a sudden, he's pulling his hair out. All of his acro colonies were melting left and right from the interior. The same problem we, that I observed with my acros. Mm -hmm. Everything's dying. He's pulling his hair out. Water parameters are good. ICP yeah. tests come back good. Talking to me again one day, and I was like, it's got to be LEDs. But I had LEDs forever. Mm -hmm. What else is different? I said, I got a theory that if you put a UV on your tank and you run 10 times the water flow through it, that you'll expose the water to UV, mm -hmm. and it will give the microfauna living in your water column that UV that it needs to produce possibly vitamin D, possibly vitamin K, possibly vitamin B12, mm -hmm. that may be not being produced by the phytoplankton and the bacteria and the microbes living in your water column. That's very interesting. And he says to me, theory. Chris, I think I might have figured out what's going on. 
turned his water flow all the way back up. He's like, now we'll see what happens if it subsides. And it's only been a week, so he hasn't, it's not enough time. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to hear what happens in a couple of weeks to see if all of his issues subside. If they yeah. do, That'll be interesting. It, because if the shoe because, fits, right? Right, because a UV a sterilizer, they use a UVC. So I'm interested to see. Like, and if, UVB. And UVB as well. Yes. Oh, I thought there was mainly. UVC like, goes first. OK. It, it, it goes away first. Right. But you will get UVB and UV index uh -huh. out of your UV lighting. Interesting. So extra flow going through it, is it going to give the organisms living in our column the right thing? I think it's plausible. Yeah.